Hello friends, this is Arindam Mukhopadhyay and welcome to Ortho Implants for Life. Today we will discuss about distal tibia fracture fixation procedure and implants instrumentations involved in the process. So hold your breath and deep dive into the video. Okay friends, first let us understand the distal tibia fracture. As you can see in this diagram, in the lower leg, there are two long bones. The larger of the two bones is known as the tibia or the shin bone. Distal tibia fracture happens in the lower part of tibia. If there is a fracture in the distal end of tibia, in general, a distal tibia medial locking plate is used. It is available in various lengths ranging from 4 holes up to 12 holes like 4 holes, 6 holes, 8 holes, 10 holes. In case of a longer fracture, 12 hole plate can be used. So let us discuss about this distal tibia medial locking plate. This is a site specific plate and it is available in left as well as the right side. This one right here is a right side plate and this one is a left side plate. Right or left, it will be mentioned in the plate. Let's take in consideration the right side plate. Now in order to fix a distal tibia medial locking plate, you will require a lot of instruments. We are going to discuss each one of them. First, the surgeon will make an incision at the fracture site. After the incision, periosteal elevator is used in order to lift and separate the periosteum from the bone. After this step, a MEPO elevator or a tunneler is required. This is inserted in the fracture site for tunneling. That procedure is called MEPO. MEPO stands for Minimally Invasive Plate Osteosynthesis. After this, take the plate of the required size. As said, we are taking the right side plate. Before inserting this plate, we will attach a 3.5 mm locking sleeve here in this part of the plate in the center hole. Once fixed, it is placed in the fracture site. After placing this plate in the fracture site, we will put K wire in this small hole so that it keeps the plate stable so that the plate does not move during fixation. If the stability is not up to the satisfaction, put another K wire in this hole. For further stability of the plate in the fracture site. Now we can move forward towards fixing the screws. Now in order to fix the screws, for this plate various size of drill bits will be used. For the shaft part of this plate, it is a 4.5 system. So a 3.2 mm drill bit is used to drill through the non-locking hole to fix a non-locking screw in the shaft region. After drilling through the non-locking hole, if required, tap with a 4.5 mm bone tap for clear entry of the screw. After this, a 4.5 mm cortical screw will be inserted. This is a non-locking screw. With the help of a 4.5 mm screwdriver, this will be inserted in the non-locking hole where it was already drilled and tapped previously. In general, a non-locking screw is attached first 
so that the plate gets connected with the bone. This will give us the compression. Non-locking screw will help you provide compression and locking screw does not provide any compression. Now in order to fix a locking screw in the shaft, a 4.9mm locking sleeve will be used. After fixing this locking drill sleeve, a 4.3 drill bit is used to drill through this sleeve. Tapping is not required in order to fix a locking screw. Now this is a 4.9mm locking screw. This will be fixed with the help of this screwdriver. The difference between a locking and a non-locking screw is that a locking screw attaches the plate to the bone and the non-locking screw holds the plate with the support of the bone. In order to fix the distal head of the plate, for the 3.5mm locking sleeve, we will use a 2.7mm drill bit. After drilling through this drill sleeve, we remove it. We fix a 3.5mm locking cancellous screw because distal part is always cancellous. This is a 3.5mm locking cancellous screw which will be fixed with the help of a 3.5mm screwdriver. We repeat the same process to fix all the other screw in the distal end of this plate. Always remember the center hole in the distal part of the plate is fixed with a screw which is longer in length. This is the main screw and this is the screw that holds the fracture together. For any other screws that is required to be fixed, we use the same procedure. In the shaft, we will use a 4.9 mm drill sleeve and a 4.3 mm drill bit after drilling a 4.9 locking screw or a 4.9 cortical screw can be fixed now in order to measure the length of the locking screw we will use a depth gauge with the help of the depth gauge we will have an idea of the length of the screw that is needed to be fixed even after this if you think the plate is not yet that stable with the fracture and the bone A 4.5 mm cannulated cancellor screw is used. In order to fix this cannulated cancellor screw, you will have to take the help of a guide wire. First this guide wire will go inside the bone. After the guide wire is inside the bone, we have to measure the length of the screw that will be required to be fixed in this fracture. With the help of a measuring scale, after measuring, you will have an idea of the length. We are taking in consideration of 75 mm length. We will have to use a cannulated drill bit in order to drill. Normally for a cannulated cancellous screw, full drilling is not done. You can retrieve the drill bit after breaking the cortex. Now cannulated cancellous screw is fixed with the help of a washer through this guide wire so that it does not get flush. 
here and there as will go through the guide wire so the where the guide wire stays the screw moves towards that direction this is how a cannulated cancellor screw is fixed after fixing the screw take out the guide wire in order to provide more stability to the fracture cannulated cancellor screws are used in order to fix distal tibia fracture we will require the help of few general instruments firstly we will need a home and retractor this is also known as a bone lever then there is reduction forceps which helps in reduction next is plate holding forceps it holds a plate and the bone together sometimes we use lohmann's clamp which helps in holding the plate with the bone when you rotate this end it gets loosened here if we consider this finger as a bone and when we start tightening it as you can see this will not allow the bone to move much once the entire fixation is done we will use a torque limiting screwdriver to make sure all the locking screws are locked properly when you fix the head of the screwdriver with the locking screw and start rotating it this creates a click sound when it is locked completely this click sound means the screw is completely locked now and we will not tighten this screw further for non locking screw no torque limiting screwdriver is used this is fixed manually with the help of screwdriver so that is all for distal tibia media locking plate if you have enjoyed the video like it share it if you are new to our channel subscribe it hit the bell icon to get the notifications for our upcoming videos if you have any queries comment below and we will surely reply back if you want to know more about career prospects in orthopedic implant industry and wish to start a career in orthopedic implant industry please click the link below in the description box and dm us to know more thank you and see you in our next video